I don't just talk about other people's stuff, I also make my own. Books in particular. To date, I have four books you can check out on Amazon. Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, Occult Mafia, Emerald of Maddox City, and the short story collection Assorted Absurdities, Tales of Kaiju Punk, and Other Genres. Hop on down to the description for Amazon links to all four books. Enjoy whichever ones you read, and enjoy the video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Omni Viewer. And while there is a lot to talk about in terms of what happened on Godzilla Day, I'd like to zero in on something that it seems a lot of people aren't actually talking about. Why, I'm not sure, but I do feel like sharing my thoughts on this. As part of the Godzilla Day celebration, John Carpenter came out of the woodwork, where he'd been lurking all this time, who knows, but he decided to host a little streaming marathon of a bunch of different Godzilla movies, as well as Rodan and War of the Gargantuas. And to commemorate that, there was an interview posted online. You can see that here. I'll provide links to it so you can read it for yourself. And there's some stuff in there where he's talking about the Godzilla movies, of course, but inevitably the question of what he thinks about the American Godzilla movies comes up. And the few people I've seen who do acknowledge this article have been focused on that in particular, and I thought I'd share my thoughts on this particular part of the article as well. Before we get too far into this, I probably should tell you how I feel about John Carpenter as a filmmaker, because I haven't really spoken about his stuff on this channel. Closest we've ever gotten is an As Written by Shakespeare video, which I'll provide a link for if you want to check it out. I do recommend it. But I haven't actually done any reviews of John Carpenter's stuff as yet. That being said, though, I do consider myself a fan. I really do like his stuff. The man was a master of the craft. I mean, just look at everything he's done. The Fog is a unique and very atmospheric ghost story. Big Trouble in Little China is a hilarious action film. The Thing, I didn't expect it to be as good as the original, because the original really freaked me out as a kid, but it was good in a completely different way. Memoirs of an Invisible Man, a surprisingly good twist on the concept. They Live is, uh... I did mention that I like Big Trouble in Little China, right? Okay, so I don't drool over everything the man does. But still, I think he has far more hits than misses when it comes to filmmaking, and knowing that he's a Godzilla fan on top of all of that just makes me like him even more. He's one of us, after all. So, I just want you guys to know that going in. It's not like I'm some sort of contrarian who thinks that John Carpenter is a hack who's overrated, nor do I think that he is an unparalleled genius. I like most of his stuff, I don't necessarily like all of it, but I do consider myself a fan of his, as well as a fan of Godzilla. So, with that established, let's get to the actual subject matter. So what most people who are acknowledging this article focus on is his response to what he thinks of the American Godzilla movies. And I'll get to the overall answer in a moment. But for right now, the final part is what most people zero in on, where he says they are computer fests, and they just like the charm of the original films, and he's just not interested in seeing them. Okay, so if you've been following the channel long enough, you know that in addition to being a fan of the classic Godzilla movies, I am also a fan of the MonsterVerse. Even though I was skeptical about how Godzilla 2014 was going to turn out way, way back when I actually first started the channel, I wound up being won over by it. In fact, I would say a large part of why I like the MonsterVerse is because I like the classic movies. And I do not contest Carpenter's statement that the movies are computer fests, certainly. I mean, they are modern Hollywood productions. Of course they're going to make a lot of use of CGI, just like everything else. I mean, there's more CGI used in a Marvel movie to the point where you'd practically think it was an animated film half of the time. The MonsterVerse, of course, is no exception to that. It realizes the title characters with CG effects. 
And I know that John Carpenter probably likes himself some practical effects. He's an old school guy, and whether he's talking about other people's work or his own work, he likes practical effects. I mean, look at the man's own filmography. Even in the post-Jurassic Park Toy Story filmmaking landscape, where everything suddenly had to be digital, he was still sticking mostly to practical effects. In the Mouth of Madness, there are plenty of opportunities where he could have used CGI, and I'm sure he used some blue and green screen here and there, whichever color it was. But for a lot of stuff, he used the old school tricks. He used practical stuff. And hey, I like the practical effects too. Back when I did the first One Monstrous Moment event, and I really do need to do another one of those at some point, I chose for mine something that could only have happened because it was using practical effects. Again, check it out if you want to know more and haven't seen it yet. So, I do agree with him that there is a charm to those original films. That being said, though, I do kind of feel like maybe Carpenter isn't seeing the forest through the trees. I mean, yes, there's a lot of CGI in the new American films. But then again, like I said, I'm won over to these movies because I'm a fan of the classic movies. And in the classic movies, the monsters are characters in their own right, just as much as the humans are. And that's something that the MonsterVerse has understood from the very beginning. And I feel like regardless of what special effects you use to convey that, as long as it is conveyed, that's what matters. And... You know, if you've seen the movies, you know that they don't hold back when it comes to giving the monsters personalities. We care so much about them. I mean, that's why the focus was predominantly on Godzilla and Kong as the main characters in Godzilla vs. Kong. They're the ones we came to see. The humans, I know there's this debate about how important the humans should be, but let's be honest here, nobody went to that movie for them. They went for Godzilla and Kong and a lot of effort was put into making them characters, regardless of how they were rendered. And you know, whether or not it's CGI really doesn't matter to me at all. Again, if you've been following me for long enough, you know that even though I like the MonsterVerse, I don't like Shin Godzilla. I've got plenty of critiques for that movie. But the idea that they are realizing Godzilla with CGI as opposed to Suitmation wouldn't even make the list. I mean, yeah. It's a little disappointing that Toho, the studio from which Godzilla originated, the studio which pioneered this particular technique, or at the very least perfected it, and the studio which made an entire movie specifically so they could prove practical effects are better than Hollywood CGI, is now just doing CGI like everyone else. It's disappointing, yes. But it's not what drives me away. It's not what makes me dislike Shin Godzilla. I have plenty of grievances with it, but that's not one of them. So if that's the main reason Carpenter is not happy with these films, I mean, I don't necessarily know if that is a sufficient enough reason. But then again, I don't necessarily know if that is the real reason. Because... I have a different kind of issue with this article, and it has nothing to do with John Carpenter. Now, I did say I would get back to the full context of his answer, and when you look at the full paragraph he writes down, or at least that was transcribed, it feels kind of like a rambling answer, a bit unfocused almost. I've read over it a couple times, and I'm still not entirely sure if when he says the first one was a disaster, if he's referring to Godzilla 2014 or Godzilla 1998. I mean, these days, most people, when you say American Godzilla, they're probably going to assume the MonsterVerse films. But I'm guessing he's probably referring to the 98 movie here, but then he suddenly says it's fine after that. I don't know, something about the answer just feels weird to me, off, like, it's hard to place. However, my main problem with this part of the article is that after John Carpenter gives that answer, there's no follow-up question. In fact, that's not even the only place that happens. The article itself feels very 
oddly written. Like, half the time, it's a conversation between two people who are speaking directly to each other, either in the same room or over some kind of video call or something. And the other half of the time, it's like John Carpenter was just sent a list of questions that he wrote out answers for and sent back. And it's random when that's going to happen. There are follow-up questions to some moments, but if any question, if any answer he gave did require a follow-up question, I would say it would be this one, and there isn't one. I mean, really think about it. He said, the American movies are computer fest that lack charm and he's not interested. And then the interviewer just goes on to whatever the next subject is. Me, personally? I have two follow-up questions immediately jump into my mind. First question, what do you think of Toho using CGI to realize Godzilla in their recent projects, like Shin Godzilla or the anime films and series? Or second question, can you elaborate on what you mean by what makes those older films charming? I'm Actually, you know what? The second question, I think, is a better one to ask than the first one. The first one might come across as kind of a gotcha question, like I'm trying to somehow catch him in a hypocritical statement or something if he happens to like Shin Godzilla over the MonsterVerse. But the second question, that allows him to speak more about the movies he actually does like and elaborate on what he finds so appealing about them over the more recent stuff. So that would have been a great question to ask, and who knows what other sort of follow-up questions might have stemmed from that. But that doesn't happen in this article. And I feel like that was a huge misstep on the interviewer's part. Because the answer on its own doesn't really provide much of an answer. It provides the start of an answer, but I would say it needs clarification. Imagine this. Suppose someone were interviewing me, and it was about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and somebody asked me, why I enjoy Thor Ragnarok, but I don't enjoy Thor Love and Thunder, which I don't. And the answer I gave was, well, Thor Ragnarok has jokes that are actually funny, and it has a proper arc. And I just left it at that, and whoever was interviewing me moved on. Do you feel like I properly explained my reasoning? Of course I haven't. There's a lot of unanswered stuff in there, Stuff that needs to be elaborated on. And the same problem exists right here. As it stands right now, the answer is the sort of thing that people could potentially just sort of read anything into. There's even a moment in the article where the interviewer asks a leading question. Specifically, what does John Carpenter think is lost in the American version of the original Godzilla? I don't think he needed to ask it that way, because clearly John Carpenter is going to share when he likes or does not like something, and pretty much everyone agrees that the American cut of Gojira is inferior to the Japanese cut anyway. But you know, I've kind of started to come around to the idea that the American cut isn't really that bad. I mean, yes, it softens the impact a bit, but there still is an impact. They couldn't very well extract everything about the original movie that made it work. They didn't recut it so Sarazawa lives at the end. They may not have dubbed the scene where the mother and her children are cowering as Godzilla is marching towards them, but they didn't cut it either. And it's also basically setting John Carpenter up to just give an automatically negative answer because he's being asked to give one. If this were a court case, there would have been an objection. And I object to a lot of things in this article. But ultimately, you know, Carpenter isn't interested in watching the American Godzilla movies. That's his prerogative. I think he might be missing out. And I think if he's missing out because of the CGI, that's not really a sufficient reason. But ultimately, it is what it is. I don't think the answer is really that bad of one, but I do think it needed to have more said about it. And why there wasn't more said is the real issue with this article and this particular answer. It's not that he doesn't like the movies. In fact, I see a lot of people looking at that answer and saying they just don't really have it affect them. 
They don't care one way or the other if John Carpenter doesn't like them. They respectfully disagree, so... So much for the controversy. Anyway, though, I just wanted to share my thoughts on that particular aspect. And maybe I should actually get around to reviewing a John Carpenter film at some point. But that's for another day. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. Congratulations, you reached the end. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to consider supporting us on Patreon. Of course, the other way to support us is to go to Amazon and check out our books. Operation Red Dragon, The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, The Occult Mafia, Emerald of Maddox City, and Assorted Absurdities, Tales of Kaiju Punk, and other genres. Also, check the description for links to DeviantArt and other platforms we operate. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.